Today we just finished the work of the hood panel. Uh, it cannot be opened very smoothly, and now it could be operated properly. Because the reason is that there is a rut, spring rut. The shape of the rut was the the, the spring was be bended in a very weird angle and the shape, and bend it back to the right right position. So it could be opened very smooth and correctly now. And the second today we just remove the. The cylinder, the lock cylinder of the the these things, yeah, and going to uh, make a new key for this cylinder. And now we are going to drive to back to the barracks. The barracks there are welding machine there and cutting machine, welding machine. And we are going to repair. Or oh, we cannot say repair. We are now to improve the ability of the throttle linkage. Yeah, the throttle linkage is not be designed properly because the engine was warped into a nineteen seventies uh, uh, later. Mid mid seventies M one one zero one M one one zero dual cam Mercedes engine yeah that's for W one one six but not for this yeah six cylinder so the linkage was completely made uh, handmade by the by the mechanic that swap it and it's not work very properly and smoothly and even not so safe it may be disconnect when you're driving so it's not very safe so now we are going to improve the linkage again okay. Okay, now we are going to start the engine from cold. By the way, uh, the temperature right now is 27 Celsius right now, so it's quite warm today in Taiwan. And uh, as we know, the KE uh, no 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 the K-Jetronic system there is a warm up regulator that increases the fuel pressure when cold, and another is the auxiliary uh, cold star valve that spray. Uh, let's spray uh, three or seven seconds when it's totally cold. And another device is the auxiliary air valve. They increase the volume of the air when engine is totally cold. So when the three devices are all operate in proper position, it could be start very smooth and fast. So let's try. So now it's totally cold. The battery is just connected. Now we can listen to the fuel pump. Okay, it's about five seconds, ten seconds. So start. So it's very typically the. I think the auxiliary fuel nozzle is not work properly. So let's start, but it still sprays some extra fuel, so now it's, it may be better, uh, easier to start again. Now let's try. Okay, and now, the idle is not so fast. So I think the auxiliary air valve is not, is not work properly, neither. Yeah, it should be higher. So let's, okay, it could start, then it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's start again. It should be very easy to start. Okay, wonderful. When we're driving on the road, uh, we can hear there uh, are some squeezing sound of the roof, yeah, and some jaw point of the, the rock arm, yeah. So that's not matter, but still have to deal with it. Now the transmission fluid fluid pressure was adjusted, yeah, ten minutes before, and now the characteristic of the transmission is much, much, much better than before, but a little bit too much. So I have to uh, put it back to a better position. And now it's in neutral, and uh, no air condition, no light, no any load. So the idle speed go up to about 1500. And when I shift to the 4, and then air conditioned, and then light turn up, and it goes to 70, uh, 750. Yeah, that's wonderful. We are going to fix up the oil pressure, oil pressure and the temperature gauge. The oil pressure of this gauge, original gauge, was operated by a real oil pressure hose, yeah. But the M110 engine, the oil pressure signal was transmitted by uh, electricity, so it's different system. I have to make some weird way to, to, to make it work. Now the car is too fast right now. Uh, too fast, how could we say it's too fast? Because you can feel the uh, gas pedal and uh, the brake pedal. You, you will totally feel that the brake pedal is seems out of work. Yeah, it works, but you don't think it really works, because when you push the uh, the throttle pedal like this, and it runs fast, and you push the brake pedal like this, the same way, you will think, wow, it's quite not enough. So it's not balanced right now. So the car is too fast. So maybe have to to make the brake better, the big larger disc or larger caliber, yeah, whatever. Just make it better brake, brake, yeah, brake ability. Oh, yo. Now the transmission fluid pressure and the kick down cable are all work together properly. Uh, because I have adjusted it for several, several times. So now when you push the uh, throttle pad uh, deeper, then it will kick down uh, in a, a very proper timing position. 
and but if there would be a kick down switch in the uh, behind the gas pedal that would be better because when you full throttle push it for fully you can uh, enforce the transmission the gearbox to to shift down yeah so now the sometimes the kick down cable is not able to to shift down the, the gear and when you have a when it has a, a switch it could be uh, it could be totally controlled and that will be much better now it's going up the slope and when you push the throttle yeah it could it could retard the timing of the shift shift timing so it's now working properly and wonderful and now when you suddenly push the throttle pad it will raise or uh, shift down and raise up the, the rpm like there is a very weird sound when the steering wheel goes to the right position there is a very weird bearing sound sometimes also occur yeah when you go straight it is uh, very quiet but when when a steer wheel goes this way or that way in the vibration of the i don't i am not sure whether it's the bearing of the wheel or something yeah it just vibrates and makes some noise but i think this kind of noise is a little bit mm, a little bit not safe yeah so have to be careful now we are climbing a very smooth uh, slope yeah in Zhishan road and now you can see the rpm go up to 3000 and now shift down and when you push it yeah it keep down yeah successfully yes wonderful yeah it works properly yeah there is a very weird sound maybe bearing or something i don't know i'm not and uh, the the fuel fuel level uh, vibrates mm, not not so correct so i don't know whether it could be trusted or not so it's better to to check it or fix it you can see that when i push the throttle health yeah like this it shifts the down successfully so it could accelerate like what you want i think the weird sound of the vibration may be occur by the vibration of the tire or bearing or uh, the bush of the arm but the sound i think is come from the roof because the convertible roof there are lots of gaps uh, lots of gap that makes the it will enlarge the vibration and the sound so just check it yeah i think now the driving uh, characteristic of the throttle is totally nearly totally okay wonderful even wonderful or you can feel that the only things have to be improved is the brake yeah so it's wonderful brake is not enough to stop the car now it's very yes like this wonderful yeah it's four four thousand yeah so fast really really fast and now i can feel uh, I, I i'm not sure if the car go with a swing bar or, or anti-roll bar i just feel uh, the rolling of the car of the vehicle is quite bigger than we uh, anticipate yeah it's maybe the car is too the height of the car is too high too high uh, the spring is too long or something yeah because uh, the higher the car is the rolling the car yeah the, the more ro rolling so when you yeah like this you can feel that the car is very slow because the spring is too long the height of the car is too high yeah if you uh, if you make the car lower lower and lower it will be more maneuverable and uh, less rolling now we arrive the old not friendly place every time we tr try we chase the car yeah and stop here okay so now the only thing we have to emphasize or make make improve it is the brake and repair this the the fuel tank level gauge to check it and to modify the oil pressure to see if we have we want to use the real oil pressure or electricity transmission signal and uh, this is the temperature gauge yeah it's also the same to see if we want to make it electronically or mechanically yeah this the, the two are the same problem okay and uh, some weird vibration sound i cannot deal with it please find someone professional to fix it up okay so now i'm going back to the barracks and to cut and weld the, the linkage of the throttle better to make it better 今天是四月三号，我们来看说引擎盖打不开，通常在别的车种啊，引擎盖打不开是因为它一个第一段的弹簧，簧力不足啊，没有预载，预载不够。那我们这个解决方法都很简单，就是这儿用力拉的时候，
啊、哦，似乎它不应该是这个角度，那下面也有一些奇怪的磨痕啊、哦，我们再研究一下吧。现在我们研究了很久哦，研究这一只弹簧冲杆的问题所在就是那边有一个莫名的折弯处，我就是这里有点弯，那我认为它应该是直的，然后它应该是那边的东西不是顶在这一个就这一个，但是它现在就是太太短了，它应该要有一个限位器让它不能跳到那儿去。好、哦，这根弹簧杆应该最多在这或这里。那这根弹簧杆，我想把它拆下来，又非常的难拆哦。这可能要整个那个 hood 通通下来才有机会哦。那就是要拆开这两个。那我们可以看到它的铰链处这里有一个以前就断裂过的痕迹哦，有没有？蛮奇怪的哦。那就是怪怪的，那也不理它。这个不是，这是钣金的人才能做的事儿，我们做不了。好，经过我们使用七七四十九，把这个洪荒之力把这个铁杆哦，用力把它扳直哦，我们就不需要把整个这个弹簧扭力杆把它拆了。那它变直了以后，它就可以掉到这个洞里面了，这就是正确位置。但它的开启角度就是蛮小的，那就没有办法，那造成我们施工人员非常困难哦。那我们要合上它的时候呢，是要一只手扶着引擎盖，另一只手把这个这样子，然后它这个玩意儿不能离开这个这个这个凹槽处，它特别用的这个橡胶是这个前轮设计也是不错，这一定不是原厂的，但是这样我可以接受。好，然后这样慢慢慢慢把它关起来，然后关的时候还得注意这个会不会撞到，你还得弄一下，最后才从中间哎压一下。好，完成这一整套流程的时候，我们去开它的时候就。它就会自动弹起哦，因为包括那边有一只弹簧杆，再加那只两只的黄力的那个加走哦，它就可以自己掀起来。然后我们再从这个地方，好，然后开的时候要很小心这个洞，这个你要它进去那个洞，其实它也是不准的，它也是有点这样子，然后卡在这儿。好，那如果要再高一格就这样，这个时候非常小心哦，我手回去扳它一下吧。如果它这只弹簧杆的尾巴可以再长一点，那就好办了。好，这样子，好，这样子就修车就比较没有问题，这个开度就好。好，那要关的时候呢，就是要这样。用就是身体顶着那个引擎盖，然后这样用力拉，让它先到第一个，然后我们再用另一只手撑着，然后一只手拉，反正都得双手并用才能成功的开启跟关闭这个盖子。好，来，我再来把它关起来。好，那因为它前面那个 hinge 铰链哈似乎有断裂，那也不晓得是不是那个原因哈。你看这个又那个，这其实应该要重新设计一下。好，所以我感觉它这个 gap 很大，整个引擎盖似乎向这边去了。但这种钣金类的调整就不是那么容易，这个可能要请钣金师傅两两人合力哈，把这个引擎盖抬起来重新锁附吧。对，我觉得这样可能比较好。好，那引擎盖的部分就是这样。好，就是那只弹簧杆的位置哈，重新设定一下，把那个角度再折弯，那不好折。本来想把整只拆下来，可我一个人是拆不下来。我靠脑筋就弄，啊，那这个引擎盖嘣嘣的，啊，那个只能调整前面电锯的那个垫片。啊，就是说如果它又有弹不开的现象，就是手插进去扳它，然后一一个人拉这个，一个人拉这个那个开关嘛。一个人扶出力，把它弄起来，这样就起来。其实别的车、别的宾士车也是这样，对。然后开的时候很小心，我要先过第一关，先卡住。好，那这个部分就先做到这儿。再来要来做那个变速箱 k e 来，我们可以检查一下它的踏板底部哦。我刚刚发现是没有 k e 开关的，都掀开以后它只是一个 plug， 一个小塞子塞住哦。照道理它要有一个电路开关的、啊。然后这个东西怎么都没有锁啊？方向盘机柱的那个 column 的底座都没有锁，再想办法把它锁一锁，干嘛一个都不锁？我们做了一些钣金哦，把这个的活动，这个小钩，保险小钩的活动范围限制在一个好的位置，它这样下去，它会自己跑到那个洞里了。好，但是我是不推荐用力去去用它，你再让它勾哦。啊，可能下面的被动的那边也可以做一点钣金，斜度什么再改变一下。哎，然后这样下去以后，我们再去压它。但是我觉得其实这一种哦，斜的往后斜的，就是前开式的 hood， 它并不需要那个保险小钩。为什么？我们开的时候开很快啊，风这样咻咻咻，它只会把它压更紧。比如说 E Type 也是啊，哦，对，就是只要往后开的，我都不认为需要那个保险小钩，就是。他开心就好，但我觉得画蛇添足，反正工程师要做就做吧。那我们这种一般的前开式的，我曾经遇过小过没过，啪起来把那个电锯都弄坏，但是也不是什么大事啊，就是再把它锁一锁而已。好，那我们接下来要去车底，我们把它开出去，然后做比较容易做焊接，因为接下来焊接可能是焊的不太好，再再切掉再调，再焊再调，这样子跑来跑去太麻烦了、哦。然后要到车底去做一些调整的作业。